Hey there, I'm Julian Huguet, and you're watching All In, where we take deep dives into some of our favorite games. And today, I'm going to take a really deep dive all the way to hell. That's right, I'm talking about Doom Eternal. By the way, I'm going to be saying hell a lot in this video, so if you don't like that word, let's just pretend I'm talking about the real and actual town of Hell, Michigan. Doom Eternal launched on March 20th and is the follow-up to the critically acclaimed Doom, not the original one from 1993, the soft reboot with the same name that was released four years ago, which means from now until the end of time, whenever we refer to it, we have to tack on parentheses 2016. Such is our curse, but after long delays and reports the game was in development hell, many of us would have gladly sold our souls for another Doom, so it's a fair price. Going into Doom Eternal, I really wanted to see how it compared to the last one, so in the days leading up to the launch, I replayed it. The whole thing. I found every secret and collectible there was, I maxed out all the weapons and abilities, I gladly sacrificed my sleep at the altar of the all-consuming bloodbath that is Doom. Parentheses 2016. So, you can imagine my surprise when I fired up Doom Eternal and was greeted with what seemed, at first blush, to be a very different game. Holy Tamagotchi and Jinko jeans, I was back in the 90s. The style of Doom Eternal was not like anything I thought I'd see again. Maybe in a hokey spin-off of a game like Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, but not in a major standalone release. Especially not after where Doom 2016 went with the franchise. Aside from a few bright blue or yellow keycards and secret areas that were nods to level design of days gone by, Doom 2016 looked like its world was drawn up by some very serious people. The Martian surface was this austere, rusty red. The halls of the UAC's research facility were dark and dank, and the demon homeworld was craggly gray stone bathed in the red glow of lava. It was a look that inspired fear and reverence for the epic battles that would come. Contrast that with Doom Eternal. I think after the reviews for the last game raved about the ways it captured the spirit of OG 90s Doom, the team at id Software decided to really lean in all the way. The map is littered with actual 1-up tokens. Instead of little Funko Pop-like collectibles hidden away in nooks and crannies, the vinyl figurine marines are denoted by giant yellow cartoon question marks. Cheats are found on 3.5-inch floppy disks. The plasma rifle went from sleek and modern back to a chunky box. Even the haircut of a common cannon fodder enemy looks like the one rocked by Doom Zombie Man in 93. He's not the only enemy that's been resurrected. The Pain Elemental, Arachnotron, and Archvile all make comebacks, and returning enemies like the Mancubus get redesigns that bring them more in line with past iterations. That's not to say Doom Eternal is only retreading old hallowed ground. There are plenty of new enemies to rip and tear into smoldering piles of blood and spinal columns. Enemies like the Doom Hunter. Picture a centaur, but instead of a half-man, half-horse, it's half-demon, half-hover tank and one of the demon's arms is a cannon, and the other is two chainsaws. What are two chainsaws going to accomplish that one couldn't? I don't know. Who cares? Stick it on there anyway. Give in to the zany madness. It's clear Doom Eternal isn't caught up in the little things, like making sense. It looks like the epitome of dumb fun. I assumed the combat would be a cakewalk. I imagined myself super shotgunning my way to glory, barely testing the skills I've learned from decades of doom and a fresh playthrough of 2016. I was wrong, and I was punished for my sins. Doom Eternal's combat demands the agility of an imp and a brain the size of a spider mastermind. It is pure and unrelenting chaos, with smaller demons constantly spawning in and taking chunks out of you while you whittle away the big baddies' weak spots. Fortunately, movement was clearly a big focus for id Software. Gone are the seldom used crouch and walk buttons. They've been replaced with a double dash ability so you can zoom away from trouble. The environments have much more verticality and now include monkey bars that can launch you to the other side of the battlefield. Even the familiar super shotgun now has a grapple function which you can hook into enemies to whip yourself around corners or launch yourself directly at them so they can get a real close up look at the ornate metalwork on the double barrels right before you blast them into putty. Making the most of the terrain and zipping through it to find health and ammo are a must if you're going to survive this foray into hell. But Doom Eternal's real stroke of genius is how it forces you to manage resources. You're always yo-yoing between full health, armor, and ammo, and being on death's doorstep with one round in the chamber. No more pistol with infinite ammo to fall back on. Instead, 
three special attacks that are on cooldown timers earn you resources. It turns each battle into a feat of mental juggling. Low on health? Better glory kill some shambling zombie for a quick boost. Need some armor? Hose down a group with a flame belch and bail. Ammo all tapped out because you can carry two variations of six guns but only a dozen or so shotgun shells? Well, I think the obvious solution here is to take a chainsaw to the nearest demon's face. All of these specialized attacks need to become part of your combat vocabulary and fast, or you'll end up like me and grateful you sniffed out all the 1-up tokens you once thought were silly. Playing through this game meant I had to retrain my usual arena shooter instincts, but after realizing what the game wanted me to learn, getting through a battle when the odds were stacked against me became transcendent. By the end of each big fight, I was gripping the controller so tight my arms looked like a revenant with the sinews bulging out. Much hay has been made about the heavy metal soundtrack and the chorus of singers composer Mick Gordon brought together to give it a unique sound. But honestly, I was so possessed in the heat of combat, I didn't have time to listen. Only when I was hunting down the last stray imps could I appreciate how amped the music had made me. When the dust settles, you have a chance to take in the scenery, and the game has some gorgeous set pieces to admire and scramble over. Poke around a bit and solve some platforming puzzles, and you'll find upgrades for your weapons, your suit, and your attacks. There's a lot to customize, and each upgrade levels the battlefield as your enemies become more formidable. So exploration is a must, but don't worry if you don't find everything. The game lets you replay levels, and even with cheats on, it counts towards your progress. This is a game that will challenge you and make you sweat, but you still get the sense it wants you to succeed. In the end, I think it's what I like most about Doom. For what seems like a goofy, over-the-top throwback, it has a message. Even when things look bleak and the world seems lost, you've got this. You may have your demons, but if you're smart and you work hard, you can face them. And if you're going through hell, keep going. Well, that's it for this episode of All In. I'm Julian Huguet. You can follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram at Hug It Out. Thanks for watching, and happy slang.